Good morning, folks. We've got a lot to discuss today, including space weather, major Earth weather, and some top science news to start the week as well. We're starting with our star over at spaceweathernews.com, finding yet another calm and quiet day. The incoming sunspots retain their decaying trend, no solar flares have occurred, and while we remain inside the coronal hole stream here at Earth, the telemetry has stabilized at that slightly enhanced intensity, leaving geomagnetic conditions quiet, but not totally silent. It's the southern opening whose wind we're seeing now, but you can see here it basically connects pole to pole going all the way up to the northern polar crown. That aspect faces Earth over the next 36 hours. Let's go next to the weather where no matter how many times you see a haboob, a great sandstorm, they never fail to amaze. This one tore through Syria over the weekend and has numerous informal and temporary camps under considerable duress. Other kind of inundation from the sky here in South Africa, farmers are happy. Hopefully any damage from the hailstorm that accompanied the rain was minimal. And hopefully the situation improves down under where this system has already produced power outage and flash floods. It is going to kick in again and deluge as it approaches the coast. By the way, it is worth noting Weather Channel forecast record cold for the central U.S. this week as the jet stream begins to dip hard. So let's talk about major solar eruptions. Most who follow the topic know of the Carrington event in 1859, but many fewer know of the two major events a bit over a thousand years ago. The Charlemagne event of the 700s and the slightly weaker blast 200 years later were both way bigger than the Carrington event and have been officially confirmed as solar proton events from major solar flares and CMEs. This was considered highly probable by the official science community, but it is now confirmed, and anything like those blasts happening today, it would all be over. Grids gone, blown transformers, melted wires, structure fires, pretty much the worst thing the sun could do to us. Up next, this article is by far the coolest and most electromagnetically relevant earthquake early warning idea in existence. The caveat is that they call it earthquake prediction, and it is not. All of these types of models sense the initial shock and then try to give a few seconds of warning to the areas where seismic waves are heading. This is early warning of something already happening, not earthquake prediction. Hopefully you all know where you can learn about how thousands of viewers, students, and full classrooms have actually started predicting earthquakes. Moving on to cosmic rays. The specific mechanism by which new neuron production is hampered and the hippocampal memory generation through the dentate gyrus is reduced is now solidly seen via the cosmic ray pathway. Once a neuron matures, it pretty much has its own electric protection, but the new ones and the creation of memory can be significantly decreased. Cosmic rays come from deep space, and when we step back to that scale, we reveal a good bit of interaction between objects that doesn't fit what we know. Today it is how the galaxies have found themselves situated in the grand cosmic web, both in position and orientation. They say, once again, there is no way for mass and density alone to account for this, that would be gravity, while pointing to the existence of other potential physical forces at work. However, the words electric and magnetic do not appear in the text, kind of a letdown. We greatly appreciate your support. It's how these shows come out every single day. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.